God's going to reveal people that we did not know that we impacted. And I think through Bob and Jay, as instruments with our church, we're going to see the people that they touched, but it was in turn touched by the financial support you gave on a Sunday morning, July the 22nd. Isn't that awesome? And he's going to say, come here, I want you to meet someone that your funds, that you worked your job hard for, enabled them to come to heaven, get to know me. And then Bob and Jay uh, were just the instruments that he used. And that's the beauty being in God's kingdom. So awesome word. Thank you for sharing that. Well, welcome this Sunday morning, July the 22nd uh, here at Calvary Grace. If you're new, we hope that you uh, got a visitor uh, card to fill in. We just want to connect with you. We promise you we won't show up at your doorstep uh, with a casserole unless you put that under the request section and uh, we'll have to find someone who can make a casserole. Maybe there's an app for that. I don't know. But we will we'll definitely send you an Email and uh, just want to connect with you after this service. Um, one of the cool things about our church, I always say it, is we have, I think, I know I'm biased, but we have the friendliest people in town uh, who are filled with the love of the Lord. Um, I will tell you this, we have people who travel right now, we have a number of people on vacation who, uh, who, who are probably listening, watching right now on live stream. And they always say this, I hate missing church because I miss kind of getting charged up, reset for the week with different people that I see at church. So thank you so much, regular attenders. And if you're new, uh, we just hope that if you don't have a church home, you might consider us as that family of God. Well, it's it's always good. If you need to get connected on what we're doing throughout the week, uh, you can do so on our church website, calvarygrace.org. You can also go on our Facebook page, Calvary Grace La Plata, or just put Calvary Grace Assembly of God. If you can remember that, use your church bulletin, put that in the search engine, it'll bring up our Facebook page. Also, if you're in Revive Youth or you're a parent or a guardian of a Revive Youth student that's middle and high school and early college, our Instagram page, great resource to find out what's going on. That's Revive underscore youth underscore La Plata. Again, you put that in a search engine, you can they'll, they'll bring it up for you and do the hard work. That's the beauty of those social media platforms. We do have some announcements want to make you aware of. I uh, just came up along with some of our youth students. Uh, We were rocking downstairs today. We are doing this summer series, and there's a big board display outside on our table uh, that you can read about. If you have a a child, three years old to fifth grade, uh, please uh, bring them out on Sundays. And if they've already come out since July has started, you'll see their name on a roster sheet. If your child's name isn't on there, it's only because maybe today's their first Sunday. We'll get them onto a team. Uh, We've got the red reflux. That sounds pretty appetizing versus the blackjacks, right? Those are characters in the Incredibles 2 movie. And we'll put the graphic up so you can see it, uh, our Sunday summer series. But if Incredible Faith, and it's based on the Incredibles 2 movie, I love our curriculum that we use. Can I tell you, one of the things that we pride ourselves in here at church is being very relevant and incredible culturally relevant, spiritually and culturally relevant, because we believe the door into people's lives has to be something that interests them. And we know our kids, many of them have seen that movie. Um, It's a great series. Today, they're learning about Captain Commandment. You may know him as Moses, Captain Commandment, and how God gave him the Ten Commandments, and he led the children of Israel across the Red Sea, even with Pharaoh's uh, Egyptian army bearing down on him. So just a tremendous time. We were down there rocking with Kids Praise. We had Puppet Show. They're doing games. Uh, we also have a lesson, crafts, snacks. If you've got a kid here today, they're going to go home with a big staff. Really cool. Their take home is a staff that's like the size of like some of those kids, like four or five feet high. It represents uh, Moses and his staff. So can I just tell you, our Revive Kids program is top notch. Uh, please bring your kids out. We have leaders who love on them and who want to teach them and uh, definitely make the Bible on their terms, uh, relate stories, and so forth. That's going on today. Later on this week, uh, we have a number of things uh, that we want to let you make you aware of. Tuesday is our noon to 1 p.m. prayer time. Tuesday, noon to 1 p.m. prayer time. That's our small group prayer uh, atmosphere that we have right here in the sanctuary. Can I tell you, sometimes during the summer, your schedule is a little different than your regular uh, school year. So if you have Tuesday available, always invite you out. Great time of joining together in a small group to pray specifically for your needs and the needs of our church and so forth. On Wednesday, really love what we do here at Calvary Grace on Wednesday. 
We have our clubs meet for Revive Kids, Rainbows Clubs, three years old to first grade. They're doing this awesome series on sharing. Who in here knows that those guys, as cute as they are, you can't talk about sharing enough, right? It's always me, 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 my, my, mine. Those are the first words they learn because I have two. I are nine and six, and I know how that rolls. And so uh, sharing is so important in making them the, the people God wants them to be. And then our kids club, they're doing Wacky Wednesday. That's Club 25. That's for second to fifth graders. Let me tell you, they've had a couple Wacky Wednesdays already. They do all kinds of crazy games. Relate that to a Bible story. That's second to fifth graders. Revive Youth at sixth grade, middle and high school, and early college and career. We are doing Summer Olympics. We're off to a great start. Uh, I tell you, our Revive Kids, Revive Youth, I say it every Sunday because I just like to brag on our church, but what we pull in for kids and youth far is superior to the average metrics of the churches uh, across the country. Uh, we're way over that 10% uh, for an average Sunday morning attendance in our kids and our youth. We're in the 20 to 30 percentile. It's just an amazing work God's doing, and he's using things like Summer Olympics uh, to do that. So uh, kids, students, come out for that. They may get wet a little bit, but it's all good. It's warm anyways outside on Wednesday night, every Wednesday through the end of August. The adults are doing one last class this Wednesday on Jim Symbolist Series, Life-Changing Prayer. Uh, Need prayer? Yeah, I think we all do, right? Like, if you don't raise your hand, you're just not, maybe, maybe you're daydreaming right now, I'm boring you, or just maybe uh, you're not thinking. You're just kind of in the summer ozone layer. But we all need prayer. This series is for you, 7 to 8.30, back in our youth room where the orange futons are at. Great time uh, there. Uh, a different kind of atmosphere, and they always bring in treats, too. They suck you in, right? So I think last week it was Dunkin' Donuts, and week before that, other donut shops. So who knows what might uh, be uh, what, who knows what might be the food of choice this Wednesday. Coming up uh, August the 1st, Wednesday, uh, that's a Wednesday night, 5 to 8 p.m., is our Roy Rogers Spirit Night. We don't have any classes that Wednesday here at the church. I invite you out to Roy Rogers. All the proceeds 25% of all the tabs goes towards our Revive Women's uh, trip to the Ladies' Conference in November. Uh, urban Outreach, can I invite you to look in your bulletin packet? You may have gotten one of these little handouts. Urban Outreach is uh, an amazing center in Washington, D.C., South Washington, D.C. Um, they minister to poor families, families that uh, obviously in the inner city who don't have a lot. Uh, in the projects area, but man, are they doing a great work, tremendous work. They rallied churches with the D.C. Police Department along with the leaders, and they do a back-to-school block party. Uh, our youth group, uh, we're looking to get kids, students to go again this year to help out. We went a couple years ago. Just an amazing time there uh, of, of just being, uh, having fun relating to all the people there of inner city D.C. in the southeast section as well as being uh, a light, salt and light to them the love of Christ shining through us. So we're going to be doing that. We're collecting supplies uh, here at the church. You'll see a bin in the foyer. Uh, August 15th is when we need to have all those supplies in. So if you're out Target, Walmart, Walgreens, wherever, and you're buying school supplies, buy one more notebook or a couple more notebooks been, they're going towards a good cause. Um, we're also, uh, we may need a volunteer to transport those supplies on August 16th. So uh, if you're interested in that, please let us know as well. Just a couple more announcements before we go to our message. Our men's and ladies' conferences, men's conference is October 19th and 20th in Lutherville, Maryland, outside of Baltimore. Women's conference, November 9th and 10th. First UPA, these two conferences will really bless your life. You're going to love them. Uh, they're, they're conferences that just change their whole uh, trajectory of where you're going. We always need volunteers, uh, media room, uh, always looking for more people to add to our media room team, as well as our Revive Kids leadership team. So uh, love it. If you have those skills, please talk to someone, and uh, we'd love to get you on the team. Well, it's great having you in the service. If you were here a couple weeks ago, you know we kicked off our uh, series, When Pigs Fly. Anyone ever use that, that, that phrase, When Pigs Fly? Or is that like, are we just getting like way back in the dark ages of like the 80s and 70s? Yeah. We brought that into a series, The mir Miracles of Deliverance that God Uses in Our Life. So we're going to show you this video, and then your pastor is going to come, and we're going to do week two of When Pigs Fly. Throughout the timeline of life, there are unexplainable moments. 
moments where we find help, provision, and salvation in ways that are beyond natural. Perhaps these moments are the fingerprint of God. Perhaps these moments, big or small, are miracles. So we're talking about miracles today. This is the second in a series. Two weeks ago we started this series. And uh, Dallas alluded to when pigs fly. That's an old Scottish proverb uh, that means probably not going to happen. How many of you know pigs do fly? Have you, have you heard of the swine flu? Okay, we'll move on from there. We're, we're looking at a God who does miracles. Some of you get that by 3.30 this afternoon. Okay. Two weeks ago, we talked about God's power over darkness. Dark, God's power over darkness. And uh, how the demons of hell, the devil himself, uh, a lot of people like to throw them into the fictitious realm. Uh, even some Christians uh, and religious sects do as well. Uh, I don't know about you, but if it's in here, I believe it. And so that is something that happens today. And we dealt with that two weeks ago, how God gives miracles of deliverance over those types of things. Next week, we're going to talk about the God who uh, has power to protect you. Uh, through your life and in ventures that you set out for. And then Sunday, August the 5th, we'll conclude this particular series with a God who provides for his people, provision for his people. The majority of American adults, actually 66% of them, believe that God does heal today. That means 33%, 34% of people in America either do not believe God heals today or they uh, don't believe they can be recipients of God's healing power I don't know about you, but I absolutely, uh, without hesitation, believe God still heals today. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, some of you know it, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he healed in the Old Testament, and he did, if he healed in the New Testament, then he heals today. And we can learn those lessons from the Old and New Testament to be able to receive that healing today. In fact, if you look through, uh, throughout Scripture in the Old Testament, uh, there was healings like Hannah him, herself, who had a miraculous birth. Uh, Elijah raised a boy from the dead. Old Testament healing. And God healed, uh, if you remember the story of Nebuchadnezzar, and he was, um, he was insane for a while, and God healed that insanity and brought him back to lead his kingdom once again. In the New Testament, you have over 30 different types of healings recorded all through the New Testament. Uh, Jesus healed people a lot of times with sickness in their body and then it's implied hundreds and hundreds of times the implication is there that God healed through the New Testament and there were all different types of healings he opened blinded eyes and deaf ears and uh, the lame walked and the, he raised people from the dead in the book of Acts chapter 20 there was a time when the Apostle Paul was preaching it's sort of a funny story he was preaching away and he preached too long and Luke said that he went on and on into the night preaching and uh, he went on so long that there was a young kid sitting in a window open window to get some fresh air and he fell asleep while Paul was preaching he fell asleep and fell three stories down to the ground and died outside uh, he was picked up dead uh, I know I've put some people to sleep with my sermons I hope I haven't killed anybody I hope you don't fall asleep today the poor boy falls out of the window thankfully Paul the apostle Paul runs down down, prays for the boy, God heals the boy and raises him back from the dead. You know, if I'm Paul, I like go, whoa, man, my sermon killed me, but Jesus used me to bring him back. So, you know, that was the moment. I think the most controversial of all the miracles in the Bible was when Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. If you record that, remember that, you know, a lot of scholars believe that's precisely why uh, Peter denied Jesus three times. But anyhow, he healed his mother-in-law. And, uh, and I, I'm just having a little fun. You've got to excuse me today. I believe in a God that has the power to heal. I believe that same power that healed when Jesus walked on earth is available to you and me today. The same power that healed is available to you and me today. Here's what John 14, 12 says. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me 
will do. I love those words. Uh, words. Whoever believes. So if you're a Christian, you have to believe in Jesus or you can't be a Christian. Whoever believes in me, he says, uh, uh, will do. This is something you will do. The works that I have been doing, and that's certainly inclusive of healing and miracles. He says, and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to my Father, not mentioning that there's rarely something greater than raising somebody from the dead, of which Jesus did. But the, uh, in the original Greek, it actually means that because there are so many other believers, Jesus was only one person on earth at one, any one place at one given time. But as believers, uh, he went to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit. And that third person of the Trinity can work through us to bring healing to people today all over the world, even at the same time. So greater things that he will do. Ephesians 3.20 since now to him who is able to be, do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to whose power, help me out, it is his power, his power at work within us. I, I love sometimes uh, the liberal news media or other commentators of even liberal, more liberal uh, religious sects and uh, denominations will talk about churches who believe in the healing power of God and they'll misscrew that and get it all mixed up. It's not what we believe. Or they'll say things like, you know, that church believes or that pastor believes that if he lays hands on somebody, he can heal somebody or they can heal. And that is certainly not true. We can't, you and I, we can't heal one person, but Jesus through us can, he can use our faith. He can use us in a great way and all the glory goes to God for everything that he does. So we serve a God to whom things are possible. Our God still does miracles today. But I think the question for us is, and how many of us have ever prayed to God to do a miracle and it just didn't happen? I mean, we had faith. We prayed, God, if you'll heal this person, if you'll come through, if you'll deliver, if you'll provide uh, in this situation. And we, we just mustered all the faith we could. We read God's word. We had other people praying with us and it just didn't happen. It didn't come through. When my mom came down with Alzheimer's disease at the age of 50, she died when she was 62. You better believe our family prayed for her every single day, several times a day. She was the, the church treasurer at our Assembly of God Church in Colonial Heights, Virginia. She also led the Tuesday morning ladies. They had a gr great group of ladies that would come out every Tuesday, led that prayer group. And so that prayer group prayed as she began to uh, fall into the demise of Alzheimer's and the grip on her mind. And we prayed and prayed and prayed for her. But 12 heartbreaking years later, she wasn't healed. She died. God didn't heal her. She died. And sometimes when you believe God can and he doesn't, it will unsettle you. It will shake you even as a believer. And some of you have had family and friends that came down with cancer and other uh, issues of life and you desperately prayed and had as many believers as you know praying and sometimes God healed but other times God didn't heal and that person eventually died and even for a steadfast believer who is really uh, strong foundationally in God's word and knows what it says sometimes we can be so emotionally shaken by God not answering prayer and not doing the healing and we lose some Somebody in our family that we just sort of come unglued at times. Sometimes people just uh, forsake their relationship with God because of that. Others stop going to church because of that. And they have a variety of different things that they choose because they don't understand why God doesn't and hasn't healed. And when God doesn't heal, a lot of people conclude, you know, he's not real. God must not be good or he just doesn't care. And how do we resolve the question when we know that my God can heal but it seems like he's not doing what I want him to do. My God can heal. I believe that, but he's not doing it. And I just can't comprehend why he doesn't come through. He knows how much we love our family member. He knows how much we want to live, whatever the case is. And we don't understand why God's not healing. I want to try to answer a few of those questions today. We're going to, at the end of the service, we're going to have time to pray with you about healing for you or a family member or somebody else that you're standing in for. And I believe God's going to muster faith faith in your heart during the message. How many of you know faith comes by hearing? Hearing by the word of God, but listening to that word today and believing that faith and belief in God is going to be built up even as we hear God's word this morning. And, and I think I need to lay out a foundational thought, and that is our God heals, but it doesn't heal everyone all the time. 
Our God heals, but he doesn't heal everyone all the time. That's just what you will see. Um, and, and many of you know that to be true because you pray for people uh, to be healed and you exercise all the faith you could possibly have. And, and not just a personal way, but you also recognize that as you read God's word that it happens throughout the Bible as well. Uh, there was a, uh, Trophimus was a... Um, uh, a friend of the Apostle Paul who was traveling with him on one of his three missionary crusades. And uh, he accompanied Paul on his actually the third missionary journey. And he came down very sick and apparently God didn't heal him. Second Timothy 4 verse 20 says, Paul said God not only didn't heal him, but I left him behind. In other words, I just sort of left him there and went on about our business. In other words, Paul said, I know God could have healed him, but God chose not to heal him and I had to leave him behind. He couldn't continue. He, none of us understand that sometimes. It was the same with Timothy. If you remember from 1 Timothy 5, Timothy had some stomach issues. He, he was stick, sick regularly on an ongoing basis with some stomach issues. And Paul told his young uh, protege, he said uh, this in 1 Timothy 5, 23, use a little wine. In other words, that was medicine back then. Take some medicine because of your stomach and your frequent illnesses. In other words, God could have healed him, but God didn't. So Take whatever, do whatever you need to to be, uh, become better as you still believe in God. How many of you know God still uses doctors and pharmacies and all of those things? It is not a lack of faith to go to the doctor, but I firm believer that we need to put Dr. Jesus first before we go to any earthly doctor. Lord, I'm praying for healing today. I'm praying that you work in my life and deliver me. And then there was the Apostle Paul himself. If you remember in the New Testament, the Bible says he had a thorn in the flesh and a lot of Bible scholars have a lot of different uh, interpretations of what that was from a demon of hell that just sort of hung around his ministry when he ministered to people and buffeted him or gave him hard time, caused people to make fun of him or it could have been a physical thing. But whatever that case was, the Apostle Paul said, I pleaded with God on three different occasions. That word pleading doesn't mean I had a 30 minute prayer after church one Sunday morning and asked God. That word pleading may, meant a continuous pleading before God, asking him to deliver me from this issue in my life and God did not Paul knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that God could heal but God chose not to heal him as a matter of fact God says no I'm not going to do it I, what I want to do is show you that my grace is going to be good enough it's going to be sufficient for you even if I do not heal you I'm going to receive greater glory notice the words greater glory uh, by not healing you than healing you and all of Paul's ministry that was certainly found to be the case our God can can heal. He often does, but when he doesn't, how do we deal with that? How do we, how do we deal with it when somebody we love, somebody, I mean, how could you not love anybody more than I love my mom or uh, other people that have been through our church that have died of various uh, sicknesses and cancers and diseases in your family and you grew to love them and know them just like uh, you were closer to them uh, than a family member and yet God did not heal them, but they eventually died. How do we all deal with those types of things in life and it becomes a tragic thing and I think tragically well-meaning Christians can say some very hurtful things I've I've heard people say like your daughter is sick and the reason is sick is probably because you've got sin in your life or you haven't done something wrong or you don't have enough faith uh, sometimes Christians can be so cruel to each other tremendously cruel and unbiblical uh, to one another and we come up with these things and well-meaning Christians can heap a lot of guilt and condemnation on somebody else who they feel is not doing uh, what they need to do to receive the healing or the miracle from God some people uh, certainly walk away from God some people walk away from church because of those types of cruel statements that are used. So what do we do with a God that we know can heal us and he always doesn't always do that? And at the same time, you know, how do we let our faith grow to continue to believe God for miracles in our life? And I just want to share with you three reasons. You'll see them on the notes in your bulletin as well. But there are three reasons why God may not heal. And I think the first one is, is Jesus refused to perform miracles to prove himself. He did that in the New Testament in Mark 8. 
It says the Pharisees came and began to question Jesus. Here's what their question was, to test him. And they asked him for a sign from heaven. And he sighed deeply and said, why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to it. I don't know about you. I did this some when I was a kid. I would pray, God, if you'll do just this one thing, I'll serve you forever. God, if you'll answer this one prayer request, I mean, I'll just do everything. God doesn't work that way. He just doesn't work that way. He doesn't heal uh, or do any miracles to prove himself to you or to me. He never has and never will. And the Pharisees tried to get Jesus to prove to us you're the Son of God by performing a miracle. And Jesus says, no, nope, that's not the way that I work. I don't, I don't respond to people's desires that way. Number one reason, he didn't do it to prove himself and he still won. Number two, Jesus never performed a miracle that interfered with his heavenly father's ultimate plan for any human being or any person whatsoever. And I'll show you an example uh, uh, that Jesus did a miracle and another time when he withheld a miracle. I think it's amazing. Remember uh, Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss and to show the Roman soldiers who, who, who the Messiah, who Jesus was, who they were supposed to arrest. And then Peter, you know, old Peter's a good old boy, had a sword with him that day. And, and when they came to arrest him, G, Peter pulls out that sword and he, uh, and, and he tries to cut off the head of the high priest. He missed his head altogether and just chopped his ear off. He was a bad aim, to say the least. Good intentions, bad aiming. And Jesus takes that ear, picks it up off the ground, puts it back on the man's head and heals that ear right there. Tremendous miracle that he did and he used it as a teaching moment. Here's what he said. He said, don't you realize that I could have asked my father for thousands of angels to protect us and he would send them instantly. But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that described what must happen right now? So you see an instance of miracles, a miracle of healing at that moment. But it was uh, he, he did not do the miracle of calling, as the song goes, 10,000 angels to protect them and set them free. He refrained from doing a miracle when it interfered with his heavenly father's plan of salvation for him to go ahead and die on the cross. So when did Jesus not do a miracle? When he, uh, people wanted him to prove himself or when it would have been a temporary earthly miracle uh, and benefit that would have been at the cost of uh, the eternal plan of God for people. But there's a third one as well. Jesus didn't do miracles when there was no faith. Remember the time when he went back to his hometown to preach and he stood up in the synagogue and preached. And this is what it said in Matthew 13 and verse 58. It says, and he did not do many miracles there because of their, help me out with the words, lack of faith. There was a lack of faith. In other words, the people said, who is this guy that calls Jesus? Wasn't this the carpenter's son? I mean, he's a little snotty nosed kid that we knew running around in our village. And he used to be the teacher's pet getting all the answers correct in school. And he used to be this, you know, we're not going to really uh, believe that he is our Messiah. And the scripture says he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith in him. The amazing thing about faith is that uh, faith moves the heart of God. When you exercise faith in your prayers, it touches the heart of God and he responds in a tremendous way. Let me give you three examples. Remember the woman who couldn't stop bleeding for 12 years. She had an issue of blood. She's embarrassed. She's in pain. She is ceremonially unclean and cannot go to the temple to provide sacrifices. And Jesus walks by and she exercised faith and she told herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I believe that I will be healed. I will exercise faith. And Jesus looked at her and said, daughter, I didn't put this on the screen. He says, what your what has healed you? Help me out. Your faith has healed you today. The faith that you have in me is what has brought healing. There was a man with leprosy. He falls down at Jesus' feet and worships him. And Jesus looks at the man and he says, rise and go your way. Help me out again. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has healed you. There was a blind man that 
begin to scream out, I can't see, but I can hear you, Jesus, and I know you're there. Have mercy on me. And Jesus says, go your way. Your Help me again. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you well. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We've got to believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And when you and I are sick or we know somebody who is sick and needs healing, God always honors faith that we have in him. We believe that he's the great healer. Did you know that all through Scripture, there was only one time in the New Testament, I should say, that we see that Jesus was tremendously amazed at humanity. And the time that he was amazed is when humanity exercised faith in him. When people exercised faith, Jesus was amazed at their faith. Remember the Roman centurion? His servant was sick and uh, was getting worse day by day. He came to Jesus and uh, said, Jesus, my servant is sick. Jesus uh, uh, probably said I could go and visit him said no you don't need to do that if only you will speak the word right here my servant back in my hometown will be healed and Jesus said it this way he was amazed he says I have not seen such great faith even in Israel this man wasn't a Hebrew he said even among my own people Israel I have not seen such a, a great faith and so I think the Roman centurion wild Jesus capital W W O W, But when you go back to Jesus' hometown, the thing that amazed Jesus was these people that I grew up with and came back to minister to, they had no faith. He did no miracles for them. And that was the thing that amazed Jesus. It was a small letter. Wow, uh, I can't believe these people don't have any faith in me whatsoever. When it comes to your faith, when it comes to my faith, what kind of wow do we have? Does Jesus look at your life and my life when we pray for needs and we go, uh, we're praying for needs, does Jesus go, wow, they really believe in that? Or does he go, lowercase, wow, they, I'm amazed at their lack of belief? Uh, you know, when you talk about the prayers that we prayed last week, uh, were they big prayers? Do we believe God for a miracle? Or, or most of the time, our prayers like this, God bless our food today and keep my family safe. Amen. I don't know about you, but those prayers are the small letter W-O-W before God doesn't take a lot of faith. I believe we need to stretch our faith out. Believe God for the miracle. Believe that he'll come through and God will honor that. I love the story in the scripture of the dad. He was in agony because of his son who was demon possessed. And the Bible says that he would throw himself into the fire and uh, torture himself and go through all kinds of agony. And the dad came in desperation to Jesus and said, but if you can, notice those words, Jesus, if you can do a miracle, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus responded this way. He says, if I can, you know, that was the question that he addressed to this dad he said everything is possible for one who believes in me you know what is that if you can or if I can and immediately the boy said I do believe and then this is what he said help my what you know what I'm going to say help my unbelief in you sometimes when we look at our track record for believing God to do great things in our lives or our family or friends lives especially in healing and in the arena of miracles we just have that that lowercase wow that God's amazed at us as far as not having faith in him. The great things that we could be seeing God do for his honor and his glory if we'd just be exercising that faith in him. Lord, help my unbelief. Help my faith to grow. I'm going to get back in your word. I'm going to believe your word more than I ever have before. I'm not just going to settle for a few scriptures. I'm going to start studying and, uh, and meditating and journaling on your word because I want my faith to grow so that I can see you use me in prayers so that you receive even more honor and glory than ever before. So if I pray for somebody and they're not healed, does that shake my faith? The answer has to be no. Has to be no. You see, our faith isn't based on what God does. Our faith is based on who God is. 
And it always has to be that way. We can never just trickle off of our faith in God because God's not answering our, our prayer the way that we feel like he should be answering it. He never changes. Faith doesn't rest on what God does or doesn't do, but who he is. And even though you may question the goodness of God, we can always trust the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God. He's always there because our faith isn't based on what he does in a moment. Our faith is based already on who he is, how he proved how much he loved us when he died on the cross of Calvary and when he gave his one and only son. When Jesus gave his own life on Calvary, he proved how much he loved you and me and the whole world. He's not willing that any should perish, but everyone come to repentance. Our faith isn't based on seeing the results of our God, but on the character of God, on the goodness of God. My God never changes. I know who he is. I know what he wants to do in our life. You see, the highest purpose for Jesus' coming was not to heal our bodies, but to save our souls. The highest purpose for Jesus even coming was not to heal you and me or our kinfolk or our family members or friends when they got sick. And even though he does that, but it was to save our soul. He said, I have come that you would have life and have it more abundantly. I've come to seek and save what? Help me out. The lost. He's looking for, I did not come for the righteous, but for sinners. I came to give my life as a ransom. Those are the reasons that Jesus came. And certainly he came uh, for a great reason. His highest purpose isn't to heal our bodies, but to save our souls. In Mark chapter 2, the guy who is carried by four of his buddies on a mat they couldn't get in the door. Remember the story? So they go up on the roof, tear away the roof of his, their neighbor's house and let the man down in the middle of the room where Jesus, a crowded room. So everybody has to push away and they're asking Jesus to heal this man. Did you ever remember that the first thing that Jesus did was not heal the man, but he forgave his sins. Jesus knew and understood the main reason. He forgave him of his sins and then he healed him. The healing was always secondary. And certainly that is a miracle that every single person who believes and calls on the name of Jesus can experience. And it's the miracle of salvation. We're talking about can pigs fly. We're talking about miracles from heaven. Do they really happen? The greatest miracle that ever happened to you and me, if you and I are believers today, is the salvation of our soul. That we've been saved. We've been purchased. We've been redeemed. We've been bought back. We're headed for heaven. We have been rescued rescued and delivered from eternal damnation in a hell. And that is one of the greatest miracles that ever, ever has taken place. You know, Jesus raised that. Uh, he raised people from the dead uh, like his friend Lazarus. He did so many different healings. Here's a little spoiler alert. Are you ready for this? If God heals you of cancer that the doctors say you're going to die for, I hate to break it to you, but guess what? One day you're still going to die. That's going to happen to all of us. We're going to die. You get sort of quiet when you talk about that, but that's the way that it happened. When, when Jesus came and he healed, he brought back Lazarus from the tomb. Lazarus died the second time and Jesus didn't come to his rescue. He went ahead and perished as well. And certainly because God's highest purpose isn't what necessarily happens to the body, but it's what happens to the soul that we would honor and glorify God forever and forever. So when I pray, I pray with every bit of faith that I can muster. I pray, Lord, let my faith be great. Somebody said, well, how about if your faith isn't great? You don't have a lot of faith. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says if you have faith like the grain of mustard seed, that is the smallest seed on planet Earth. Even if you just have a little bit of faith, use what you have and God will honor it. Because here's how it works. If you use that little bit of faith, it's going to grow as you see God. Some of us need to see God do some miracles in our life and so that we can believe that God has honored my faith. Now I'm going to believe him for greater things and greater things. Not so I can say God's using me in a greater way, but I can bring more honor and glory to his name is the real reason that we do that. And, uh, 
You know, for my nephew's wife, Stephanie, she's going through stage four cancer. She's already been through in the last several months through all of the, uh, uh, the procedures to eradicate it in her blood. Last week, got the results back, and uh, she's only like 40 years old or so, and her blood count is still the same. Nothing has changed, and, and so they're going to try to increase it and do some more radical uh, things to her to try to get rid of that cancer. For your family member, you can't stop me from believing in the miracle world working power of God. Listen, I don't care how much the doctor says, what the doctor says. When the doctor says there is no hope, there is always hope in God. We are never diminished. Our God will always provide for us. He will always work for us. And even if he doesn't do what we think he should and come through with the prayer that I'm praying, I still believe because my faith isn't based on what he does or doesn't do. My faith in God is always based on on who he is. Because one day, you and I will all be healed and we'll be living forever and ever in the presence of God and all of these earthly trials and tribulations and sicknesses and disease will seem minute in comparison to the great things that God has got in store for those who love him. Psalm 147.3 says, He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their Wombs. Would you stand with me? Our worship team is coming today. Would you stand with me? Would you bow your heads together? Let's just pray. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts right now in this service. Lord, may our hearts be open. May we on purpose receive from you what we need to receive. I ask you a question I ask often. What is God saying to you? What is the Holy Spirit saying to you right now during the course of this service? Have you prayed for something in the past and God didn't come through? You're so heartbroken. You're so maybe angry and frustrated and all those emotions, I'm glad God understands, and, and you just feel like giving up. But I want you to know you need to hold on. Our God is true. He is faithful. He'll come through for you in some great ways, some wonderful ways today. Maybe there's a person or persons in our service this morning, and you're saying, Pastor, you know something? I just don't have a right relationship with God. I haven't accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I haven't asked him to come into my heart and my life and forgive me. And I, I really do want to become a believer. I want to become a Christian today so I can start reading his word, start praying and have confidence that he's hearing me and go on living a Christian life, me and my family today. I'm not going to embarrass you, but I do want to pray for you today. Would you just slip your hand up and slip it right back down? Anybody, anybody in the building today, anybody whatsoever, anybody today? Thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else in the building today? Anyone else? Anyone else? Father, I just pray right now that your Holy Spirit be so real to this person and perhaps other people in the, in the building who feel like their relationship with God is just not what it ought to be. Today, Lord, we join with them in saying, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, and come into my heart and life. I believe in you. I believe in your miraculous power. And I believe the greatest miracle is to forgive me of the life that I've lived and the sin that I've committed, we were all born into that sin and had to pray the same prayer. And Lord, I ask you today to forgive me. May your Holy Spirit come and take up residence in my life. Change my life in ways that I cannot change it myself. Lord, the power of your Holy Spirit within me can do great things in my life, and I believe it with all of my heart. I don't want to keep living the same life that I've lived in the past. I want a brand new life, a new life in Jesus Christ today. And I accept you and thank you for forgiving me and coming into my life. I believe you have written my name in the Lamb's Book of Life today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Well, heads about and continue just to seek God today. In a few moments, our worship team is going to lead us in a song. And I'm going to ask you today, if you are in need of a healing miracle from God, either physically in your own body or it can be emotionally, mentally, you need God to come through you, through for you in some miraculous way. In a few moments, I'm just going to ask you to come up front and form a single line across the front here. And uh, it doesn't certainly have to be physical healing alone. Any area of mir the miraculous, you need God to touch you and, and bring healing to you in. Or you're standing in for a family member or a friend or somebody who's... So you've been praying for somebody 
for so long and you just want to believe God today. I believe faith is elevated in this place today. And where two or three are gathered together, there he is in the midst of them in his miraculous healing way. And then as people begin to come and we sing, as people form that line, I'm going to ask everybody who will, anybody who will, uh, to come and stand behind those people, put a hand on their shoulder, begin to pray for them. I'm going to go down and anoint each one of them today and pray for them. But we want everybody prayed for if possible. And uh, would you just start coming right now? If you want prayer today, just come right now. And we're going to believe God for this. And you can, the worship team can start singing.
Yes, you are. You're more than enough for us today, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We're just claiming their healing in the name of Jesus today. Praise you, Jesus. We're claiming the healing, Lord, for your honor and for your glory. We believe it will come to pass. Lord, the enemy of our soul always wants to plant seeds of doubt in our mind, to not believe God. It's just not going to happen. It it can't happen for me. You've done too many bad things. God, I'm so glad, Lord, you're no respecter of persons. You love us all. You you want to work in our lives for your honor and glory, Lord. And so we, we bring ourselves to you today. And people who are wrestling with why God is not healing, I just pray the peace that surpasses all understanding been to guard their heart and mind today. May the Word of God just begin to seep in in a, in a mighty way and just begin to flood their heart and mind. Be the glory and the lifter of their heads today. Let them know God's still on the throne. He still does miracles today. And I'm believing Him for a great miracle. Thank you, Lord, for the greatest miracle of all, and that's the miracle of our salvation in which we will be able to live eternally with you forever and forever and forever. And we give you thanksgiving and praise and honor and glory. We ask it in the powerful name of Jesus. Could we just give the Lord a hand for what he's doing today? Let's do that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so faithful. You're so faithful. You're so faithful. I know some of you are dealing with some really tough...